Hello there. Today we're going to be joined by Debbie Turner. She is the senior broker with Howe Robinson Partners, and we're going to talk about LNG and some other things. Debbie, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. And thank you very much for the invitation. Now, when we look back in 222, record year for LNG tanker contracts, but how do you think demand is looking for 2023? Is it expected to hold up? And even beyond that? Definitely going to hold up. I mean, without a doubt, we are still waiting for a number of uh, Qatari orders which are coming through for the big uh, planned Northfield expansion. Um, the yards are very full. They so far have only taken one order for 2027. Um, this is how far we are now going with the order books. It's unheard of, unprecedented to actually talk about four to five years ahead of for LNG carrier building. Um, we are limited by obviously the number of carriers that can be built each year. And with the Qataris probably taking at least 50% for 27 and possibly into 28, we certainly see demand very much there in force. We must, however, kind of put a huge stipulation on this. It's going to be very much on the final investment decision, going to be made for a lot of the LNG projects in the USA. This could have a huge effect on how, how much further the order book expands. Um, if it doesn't, if those don't go ahead and there's anything up to seven, which could happen in the first half of this year, then obviously we are going to have some curtailing of potentially expectations for the order book. Now, when we look at low carbon fuel options, I mean, the sector has, or you tell me, has it been slow to adopt them? And are you noticing, um, you know, any insignificant shift, any significant shift uh, towards alternative fuels in the new build orders? The ships are becoming eco. People are trying to run at boil off speed. Um, there are emissions monitoring. People are trying to reduce methane slip. There are a whole lot of innovations coming through, obviously, to look at carbon, methane, um, but as such, there won't be any change in propulsion, not for some considerable time, because without using their own fuel, what are they going to do with the methane? Obviously, they reliquify it. And in high gas price environments, we have seen quite a few companies um, using um, bunkers rather than LNG and reliquifying where they can. But as such, most LNG carriers will continue to use their own cargo as fuel. Now, when we look at the carbon intensity index coming from the International Maritime Organization, you know, it's the latest in a series of regulatory interventions really designed to lower the carbon footprint of the shipping sector, particularly. How has the industry responded to that? And I suppose 15% emissions reduction by 2030 in line with IMO, is that uh, too ambitious or is it achievable? Shipping is only 3% of the problem, of the worldwide problem. We're being hammered. And of course, one thing is that the LNG or the, the ship owners in general, I won't just go across the board with LNG, ship owners in general are doing their best to do whatever they can. But you've got to realise we are a minuscule part. And can someone please put some rules in place so the ship owners can then go ahead and do what they need to do to their vessels? Talk to me about carbon credits. How do you see them fitting into the broader industry decarbonization strategies? It's going to be a very interesting one because um, it's all down, certainly from a shipping angle, it's all going to be down to who's going to pay. And at the moment, it seems very much that the charters will pay. Um, if anything is put back towards the owners, obviously, there'll be put some, some pushback on that. Um, again, nobody's quite sure exactly what the carbon credits are going to be and exactly how they're going to impose them. I think there was that, I mean, that word uncertainty, which you mentioned previously, it's, it's a, a huge word in the shipping sector and nobody likes that at any, any point in time. Once the regulations are in and once everybody knows what they've got to do, then I think it will be a smooth ride. But we've got to, we're going to have some pretty bumpy waves in between. Well, hopefully we'll find some of that clarity at Gas Tech because that's what we're all <laughs> looking forward to. Gas Tech 2023. What do you expect? We're going to be the key focus areas and maybe a few takeaways. What do you think? You're going to Singapore, which I think, you know, it's a, it's a very good place to be. It's a shipping hub. You know, anytime you can go and see the number of ships that are, are anchored outside in the bay. I think everybody is going to be very concerned about the future 
I mean, some of the some people are putting it out there that on the LNG sector, every every ship will be obsolete by 2040. Unfortunately, you can't say that because you know people are investing 250 plus million in LNG carriers for delivery in 26, and you're telling them their payback time is only 14 years. No, that's not going to work. Um, so I think there's going to be a compromise. LNG is whatever you say is the transitionary fuel. It will be around at least until 2050. So I think that's where the focus should be. Hydrogen and alternatives are very good, but unfortunately they are, they're a long way off yet from actually being accepted. And I think, you know, even ammonia, it's not a very nice substance. Um, and there isn't enough in the world to meet everybody's demand. So a lot to play for there. And we're really looking forward to yeah. the Shipping and Maritime Theatre. We're looking forward to seeing you there. So Gas Tech 2023 in Singapore. Really looking forward to it. Debbie Turner from How Robinson Partners. Thank you so much. And thank you very much.